as you guys know, the patrols had a massive makeover and I'm getting a bunch of questions about the entire process. So I'm gonna give you guys a full rig rundown eventually, but today I'm gonna to talk about the first stage of this patrol's makeover, which was the suspension. So I brought this car about four years ago and it already had a bunch of Superior Engineering's gear under it. And when I went into Superior, they told me they estimated it to be about seven years old, which is some of their first gen products. So the miles I put on this car in about three years is what the average four driver might do in about 10. So when I say it was well overdue for a makeover, I wasn't lying. With all that being said, it just proved to me that the Superior's gear could be put through its paces. Hence why I decided to go with them again, but upgrade it to their new and innovative designs. Another fun fact about Superior Engineering is everything is built in-house and is Australian made. So enough of that. Let's get into tearing out this old gear and give the suspension the freshen up it needs. Yeah, look, tell me what's the vibes, what's the moves? Yeah, I just hit a mic for the jewels. Yeah. Ain't no captain, I'ma tell the truth. I've been winning for so long, it's hard to lose. Deal, be my source, uh, Christian, like the York. Yeah, I can't stop when I'm far, just get back up. Yeah, I've been quiet all along on my TV toes. Yeah, I can't keep it to myself, I just give and go. I'm a visionist, yeah, you can't picture this. Yeah, ain't no way you cannot work me, boy, I live for this. Yeah, sipping essential, that's the essential, something influential. Yeah, so fundamental, that's fundamental, on instrumentals. Yeah, speed of the tempo. Yeah, we got potential. Shoot a movie like I'm Denzel. Running my ride to the end zone. And he's looking to find me. Man, you know where to find me. I'm trying to give me a Grammy so I can dedicate it to my granny. Look, tell me what's the vibes, what's the moves. Yeah, I just hit on my key for the jewels. Yeah, ain't no capping, I'ma tell the truth. I've been running for so long, it's hard to lose. First time putting in gear with the new suspension, so let's uh, see how she drives. roll out the driveway like we used to do. That's nuts. Like actually, I normally turn a corner. Like I'm and generally like just tip. I'm I <laughs> No word of a lie, I'm so generally impressed with the suspension in this car. Like it was well needed. I like I could feel so many differences from the shocks and the way it's soaking up the bumps to putting the sway bars in and having like less body roll and every other arm that we've upgraded in the bushes and everything like that there's way less knocks there's way less movement this car is driving like an absolute dream i'm so so happy with this so now that i'm a little test drive i've actually got a trip coming up so i'm thinking it's time to go find some dirt and test this thing out for real so i guess i'll see you at glass house After a few big days of rebuilding the suspension setup, it was time to finally get out the tracks and test out this new gear. Now, there is no better place to put some new gear through its paces other than the famous Glasshouse Mountains. After a complete teardown and rebuild of the suspension, you bet I was intrigued to see if the patrol would perform just as well or if these new modifications would allow it to drive better. I've created what I like to call a hybrid setup. I was once told that you couldn't create a car that was the ultimate tourer and wheeler in one. And you bet I took that as a challenge. So the first test was to see if this old girl could keep up with the boys on Little Red. But I'll leave that to you guys to decide if you think it kept up with the blokes well enough. The second part to this test is to see how the BGU goes fully loaded. I packed and filled the canopy, ready to head off to Fraser Island. I needed to find some new obstacles to stretch the legs over, and Fraser offers a large range of different terrain. From the bumpy inland tracks, soft low speed sand driving, 
and stretching the legs over some high speed sand runs down the beach. I couldn't think of a better place to test the gear some more. I've used this gear all over the east coast from Australia's most iconic beaches and some of the tougher tracks on the east coast of Australia. This vehicle is my workplace, my home on wheels and the core of my life. The most important modification I can add to this vehicle is reliability. So I need to make sure that every bit of gear added will make the miles. The gear I use can't require mechanical sympathy. I drive this car every single day, day in and day out, from the shops, from state to state and through some of the toughest tracks any vehicle can see in Australia. So I guess the question is, did I make the ultimate hybrid suspension setup and how am I going to feel about this in a few months? and I wanted to give you guys the review that you guys deserved. It's been six months since I've had the suspension in. So, today is the day I'm sitting down, I'm filming this review for you and telling you guys how the last six months has been running all the superior gear. Also, a bit more in depth about exactly what we changed. To start off, my old suspension was shot. It was terrible. My car had it so many knocks, it barely handled nicely on the road, no sway bars, so it had so much body roll, and when I added the canopy on, because we're a tourer now, I even have a rooftop, I just couldn't handle it. So we made a few changes, and my old setup was set up, I guess you could say for wheeling. I ran no sway bars, flexi coils, I mean, I had really long shocks. It was really set up to flex and take on the tracks. So a few things that we changed is I went a shorter shock length, I added sway bars, which I was like, what? And these sway bars don't have quick disconnects like my old setup used to, even though I never ran them. I still had the option if I wanted to put them in and take them out. These ones don't disconnect, but they are the Superflex sway bars. And let me tell you, it kind of sounds contradicting. And uh, they work. So let's get into some of the gear. Some of my favorite things that I've added is my 2.5 remote res shocks. Now, Obviously going a remote res is going to be better. I did used to run a Marta Extreme remote res in the front of my car But let me tell you when they had no gas in them. I meant they had no gas in them. So I was super excited to get these because obviously I'm doing a lot more touring now than I am wheeling I'm hitting more corrugations. I'm doing longer drives So I wanted something a lot more comfortable But the benefit that I've really enjoyed out of these shocks is the eight stage adjustment I have so many adjustment options with these shocks it's actually ridiculous. When I got my canopy on, there's an adjustment. Got it off. When I'm towing, it's marvelous. I'm in love. It's actually so many adjustments. It took me probably three months to find the right ones. And that was like in that three month period, I spent every single week getting out of the car, adjusting them, fine tuning them, finding what I liked. It was too many options. But now that I've spent six months consistently adjusting them, I've really learned how to use them. And I'm a huge fan of this feature. Now, the next thing would be the Hyperflex arms. I used to run the Superflex, I now run the hybrid Hyperflex arms. Let me tell you, these things flex phenomenal, phenomenal? These things flex phenomenal off-road. I'm in love with their off-road capabilities, but the best thing about them is the on-road handling. It's actually added and made my car drive better. Now, like I said before, my suspension setup was really targeted beforehand to the off-road use. Whereas now I've had to make a mixture between off-roading and on-roading and I didn't think it was possible to have so many aftermarket products like the Hyperflex arms, like the long arms, and have them be so good off-road, but how could they be so good on-road? I didn't think it was possible, but it is. I've actually got the long arm kit, which is made with a quality high tensile solid bar and they've even got bracing on there. These arms seem invincible to me. I've put them through so much crap sliding on them, banging on things. My God, do they handle. Not only that, obviously everyone knows long arms are better off-road, but let me tell you, it has fixed so much rear steer in the back of my car. It's helped with off-roading the way my car drives as well, with obviously the rear pinion angle. There's so many benefits on and off-road with the long arms. I'm so impressed with these. I wish I did it sooner. Also, I got all this stuff installed at Superior, but one of the benefits of their long arm kits, it actually comes with the jig, meaning that you can set your wheelbase correctly and get all the angles that you need to, which is awesome because there's not actually many other kits. I don't even know there's even another one out there that exists that comes with that jig and that part, so you guys can do it at home yourself. 
The Hyperplex and long arms have been really good with improving the off-road capabilities, but my most shocking part is how well they've made the car handle on road. So weird that I'm adding all these aftermarket accessories and I'm getting the benefits on road. It's just people are like you idiot, of course. But no, it's I used to run shocks with no gas, guys. Come on, let me live in a bit of luxury for a moment. Now another favorite thing about Superior was why I kind of trusted them was not only I've used their gear for the last four years, their first gen stuff that held up is that I have an appreciation for engineering and things that go into designing new products like using the CAD programs and CNC machining. There's a lot that goes into it. I've worked a little bit with Trays and Canopies for the last year and seen what goes into creating those so I really understand what it takes to make new products and innovate new designs. So I know Sapira used some of the best CAD programs out there to create this stuff but the thing that sold it for me is that their R&D testing team is made up by active and effective four drivers. So not only is the design team people that really know what they're doing, they're four drivers making four drive gear for four drivers. They know what they need to make. And the team that uses it are out there every single weekend testing this gear. And I know it's tested hard. I do 40,000 Ks every three months. I need gear that's gonna last me. So I've beat on this gear and I know it handles anyway. People are asking a lot of questions like what size lift do I run? So I'm just going to run through things like that. There's a car coming though, so I need to stop. Another car. That's what happens when you film your bloody cardboard. It sounds like a pigeon. What was the name? Oh, what size lift do I run? I run a three inch lift. I believe low and wide is the way to go when you're setting up your car for anything really actually. Touring, wheeling, all of it. Uh, so I run a 3 inch lift on 37s, hence why I have emphasis on a low lift when running 37s. Um, so another thing that I was concerned about with changing some of the things in the suspension with my shocks, as much as I love them, I used to run 12 inch shocks all the way around. I now run 10 and a half. Now I run 37s, meaning I have very little up travel and require on all the dial travel in the world to have any kind of flex on the tracks. So going to a 10 and a half inch shock, I was kind of a little bit concerned on how the car would go. But with using it and learning a lot in the last six months, I kind of noticed that you don't need stupid big shocks. You don't need flexi coils to be capable of road. Sidetrack. I did an episode with Sam Miles and Built Not Bought. We came fourth on the overall leaderboard. And if you've watched that series, you know he's tested some serious suspension setups. I had sway bars in, I have 10 and a half inch shocks, I have my full canopy loaded rooftop and this thing still came forth. That's pretty impressive to me considering I haven't set this thing up for flex at all. I've set it up to be a tourer that I can hit the tough tracks when I need. So I was pretty impressed with it. So overall, going a 10 and a half inch shock, I don't regret it at all. It's actually great. I would much rather sacrifice on that length to have the comfort and all the adjustments and all those perks that these shocks have to offer. So I obviously just upgraded all like my panards, tie rod arms, that kind of stuff is all just Superior's aftermarket stuff. I really just like to run all the aftermarket stuff. It's built a bit stronger. I know it's going to be reliable. So I've just upgraded all those arms. Uh, you think the closest kit you can get to what is in my car is their three inch kit. If you guys are interested in the suspension components of my car, the kit that you can get that's closest to mine is their three inch kit. Uh, which is something that I'd recommend. It's been six months of me using this new gear and I'm pretty impressed. I've always liked Superior. There's obviously a reason they're one of Australia's leading manufacturing in this industry. Uh, the fact that they have budget-friendly options as well. You don't have to buy all their high-end stuff. They can set you up for touring, they can set you up for wheeling, or they can do what I've done and go on sort of an in-between. These guys seriously know what they're talking about. Now, if you have any questions about my setup, feel free to message me. But my best advice is talk to Superior because I spent days talking to Superior going over what kind of suspension I wanted to put in my car and they're the ones that led me to put all this gear in my car and I am stoked with it. I wouldn't change it any other way. So I'm going to put a link in the description with their website, phone number, socials, all the kind of stuff that you guys need so you can access and talk to them because uh, the best way to go... You want to be in it? Come on. I'm getting interrupted. But yeah, if you guys want to contact Superior, I'm going to put all their details in the description below. 
Uh, if you have any questions on your car specifically, if it's different than my setup, I really just suggest getting on the phone with them. They'll honestly sit there for half an hour on the phone and talk you guys through exactly what you guys need to do with your suspension setup because I find that these things are actually very personal. I really do suggest talking to these people with the knowledge in all areas on people setting their cars up for four-wheel driving, touring, all the kind of options. They really, really have great advice. Anyway, guys, I bored you enough. Hope you guys enjoyed this. I get questions all the time about my suspension, so I hope this helped uh, resolve some of those questions. Uh, but if there's anything I missed out, let me know, and maybe in the next Red Dirt episode I can touch on it a little bit more now that you guys know that I run all the superior gear, um, and if there's anything I missed, I can just answer it next time. Bye! Bye.